I should have applied for Temptation Island because the way me and my wrist are set up, we are broken. And so are a lot of these relationships. So let's get into it. Hey y'all, welcome back to Taste of Reality, reviewing Temptation Island season three. Forget the episode, but that's okay. Before we get into it, make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever I post, and let's start the review. We're gonna start with Julian and Kristen. There's not much to say on these two. Um, Julian is getting really close with Maya, but he's not impressed with how she's been acting lately. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure if she'll be able to be the person that I need her to be right now, for me, in a way. And it sounds selfish, but it's, it's true. Now, first of all, Okay, first of all, y'all are not gonna go make some food while I'm preparing food, eat it while other people are waiting, and then think you're gonna be first in line for food. No, no, no. I don't know what Julian was talking about. I don't know what this other chick was talking about, but I know this has nothing to do with their relationship, but this is unacceptable. I was upset too. So I don't blame you, Maya. You can be mad. I'm mad. Let's be mad together. Now, secondly, I don't understand these two's relationship. I can't tell if they're friends or more than friends or yeah, it's it's a really weird, cloudy relationship. So the way that he reacted to how Maya was reacting to the other women was almost like a, oh, I could have seen you as a potential, but now that you're showing me a side that I don't appreciate, I don't see you in that way anymore. But I was under the impression that he didn't see anybody in the house like that and that Maya was just a friend. Somebody break that down for me in the comments because did I miss something? I think I missed something. I need, I need an explanation. At the end of the episode, each person was given the option to send a message to their partner and both Julian and Kristen's messages were sharing about the growth that they've experienced and the fact that coming here has changed them for the better in the long run. And I think it was sweet. When I heard him say what he's been going through, I realized we're both working so hard for each other and for ourselves. And it's just, I hope it's not too late. I honestly don't see any reason why they wouldn't get back together. The real nitty gritty of why they were in a rut in the relationship seems to have been addressed and they seem to be open to exploring more into why they have hit a roadblock in their relationship. If they work through all of their roadblocks, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't want to continue on with their relationship. That's my opinion. If you disagree, you can argue with your mama. On to Aaron and Corey. Now Shaq, I didn't even realize Shaq was still in the picture, but Shaq is not here for Aaron's revelation. I just pushed him away because I couldn't accept the fact that someone would actually love me. Every fiber of my being hopes that Corey f***s up at one of these bonfires. It's so interesting how he says like he's there for her, she's so incredible, she's whatever, whatever, whatever. Now she's making great strides in her growth, great strides in her personal reflection, and he has an issue with it because that means she would not pick him. But if you valued her as a person, it wouldn't matter whether or not she picks you. What matters is she's in the best place in her personal life to move on and live a better life than she was living before she came on the show. Anyways, she saw through whatever relationship that they were having. She didn't want to lead him on and they ended up sending him home. I'm, I'm human, so I was torn between like trying to be there for everything you needed and also being like, I want that girl, you know what I mean? So it was hard. Honestly, good riddance to Shaq, no ill will towards him. It's just the fact that Erin is in a different place. Erin is trying to really focus on herself. She has said, I need to be selfish. And if sending you home is gonna accomplish that, then it's your time to go. Corey, on the other hand, still has reservations of Erin. He still thinks that she's gonna find an opportunity to get somebody who's better than him. And my thing is like, I have to stop and think. So if after you've been th through this process, you've seen her do the work and you still have this insecurity, is it worth pursuing the relationship? If there's going to be this looming thing of, oh, one day the other shoe's going to drop, why make yourself susceptible to that? Granted, they are in separate villas, so it's hard to judge whether or not he really would still have that if he has seen her in person, he has seen her evolution. 
but I still think he would have those reservations. And it's like, you're going to have to make a clear distinction whether or not you're okay with that or whether or not you're going to take this newfound growth and find yourself with somebody else or alone. Alone is fine too. The message that he sends to Aaron is all about growth, all about um, him finding his him, himself, his self-confidence, and Aaron, mm -mm. I just went into it thinking he was gonna be a lot more like loving. I mean, I don't know why Corey wouldn't say he loves me. That obviously hurts me a lot. I understand her frustration about not feeling the love and the message, but it irked me a little bit that she did not acknowledge how self-assured he was, how confident he was in the clip and how he has taken this opportunity and found a way to develop himself personally. Okay, maybe he didn't say I love you at the end. That wasn't the message that he was trying to convey to you because he's assuming that you know he loves you. But he wanted to show you like, I've grown, I'm doing better. The man that you wanted me to be is the man that I'm becoming. And she, she didn't acknowledge that. It not it She did in her clip, but she didn't acknowledge it when reflecting on his clip. I am, however, glad that in her video, she did acknowledge that she was very one-sided when they came on the island, just saying that he was the one who needed work, but she later discovered that she also needed work and that she has done the steps that it took to peel back what her personal issues are in order to be a better woman. So yeah, she irked me a little bit, but she's also making me happy. It's a weird combination, but we're happy for Aaron. Moving on to the third couple, Erica and Kendall. Now, Alexis is afraid that Kendall is going to leave her. Yes, baby. Yes, he will. Me? What, what am I going to do? I don't know. Maybe you'll miss your girlfriend. Maybe. Forget about you all the way, huh? Mm -hmm. My thing is, even if he doesn't leave you, even if somehow you guys leave as a couple, commit to each other, you're full, you're in a full-blown relationship, what about this man makes him desirable to you? Like what, the way that he's moved in this house with you, the stories that you've heard about him and his relationship, like why would you want to stay with him? And one thing I'm really not understanding is the hold that Kendall has because even Erica is afraid of folding once she sees him. Girl, you have gone too far to move back. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Like don't entertain that as a possibility because they manipulate you and they know they got you. So they're like, hmm, I can push the limits because she might be devastated, but she gonna come back. Kendall has somehow digmatized Alexis and what was this other girl's name? Nicole? I think her name was Nicole. And he's fiending. He's fiending for this threesome. I'm gonna go to sleep. It's well, okay. not you're tired though? <laughs> what are you looking like though? Nothing. I'm going to bed. No, that's fine. I'm saying that's good. And what did I say, Alexis? What did I say? I said it last week. I'm gonna say it again. Your presence is not enough. He has already said, well, okay, he didn't say it, but he's already proven that, oh yeah, I like you, that's great, but you're insufficient. I need more in order to be fulfilled. And you're clearly uncomfortable. And he's out here throwing a fit. This is the man you want? This is the man you want? <laughs> Granted, I know this is already pre-filmed. They've already made their decisions. But as a viewer, I'm just like, child, no. Kendall sends a message to, shoot, what's her name again? Um, Erica. And it is very condescending, in my opinion. Our goal was to grow as individuals, yet see if you can define your own true identity. There's been times where I've questioned you and I don't want to have any more questions about you or our relationship. I'm glad that she's standing her ground regardless of the things that he said, so much so that she didn't even send him a message. And he somehow, somehow finds a way to flip it on her. When I tell you this man is sick. I understand the pain of saying snippets rather than really understanding where I'm at. And then I don't know what guys in a villa are putting in her head. So if you can't think on your own, I mean, it just says a lot. He is sick, twisted, and just, I don't, 
I don't understand. How are you going to say now, oh, other people are manipulating her and if she can't think for herself, then I can't be. So she's unable to see that you're a problematic man and she does not want to deal with you. It must be something that's imposed on her through other people's opinions. She can't form that opinion on her own. He really thinks he has her that brainwashed that she could never come to that realization independently. Oh, he makes me mad. He makes me so upset. But again, I'm so glad that Erica has found her voice. She has stood her ground. And I'm, I'm so confident that she will not fold. I have every confidence in her. Girl, if you fail me, don't be up. Uh, child if you fail me don't air that episode i do not want to be embarrassed last but not least we have a chelsea and tom (laughs) tom is very affected by what he saw and i'm just like confused i just want to be alone i don't want to put on display what i'm feeling right now i'm feeling exposed i just i just want to I feel helpless and I want to just be away from anyone. I didn't believe she would come here and and cheat on me. What about Chelsea's actions is different from what you were doing? Everything that Chelsea has done has been reactionary. She has seen what you've done and been like, oh, this is what we're doing. I'm going to do this too. Yet he has this weird perspective that wow if she was gonna come on here and cheat on me like I never would have thought she would do that to me and you were the one stepping out first how is this how is this on her he is amazing him and Kendall honestly they need to be studied in the lab because they are so unique they are so special Chelsea and Blake have crossed the threshold y'all they did the little promise promise do you I think so. You think so? Tomisito, pack your bags. Pack your bags. <laughs> pack it up. Okay, it's over. This relationship is done. It's done. And if it's not done, it's definitely not going to be the same. That's for sure. What I would love to see the show do, and I know they never would do this, but mix the two villas together. Bring in the people who the the partner has been fallen for. Let's put them all in one house. Let's see the kind of mess that that would do. Like just for just for like three days. The last three days, let's mix and mingle everybody. Ooh, that's a show I would watch. All right, moving on, moving on, moving on. Uh, Chelsea is watching back Tom's message, and she's not impressed at all. Embracing the flirty side of my personality and while doing so I've maintained my my integrity and kept my word to you and stayed true to our, our promise and I want you to know I've learned that I can be a committed boyfriend and that you can trust me. I wouldn't be impressed either if I was her. He all but said I'm not willing to change. He somehow justified his flirty nature saying oh yeah I've been able to explore this side of me while also finding out that I could still be a loyal boyfriend. No. My main problem with you coming into this house was that you were flirty and all you did was perpetuate that narrative. And somehow you think this is proven that you're a loyal boyfriend? You're proving me right. He just, he, uh, hmm. And then, and then he finds a way to be upset with her message and throw a little temper tantrum. All of her insecurities and her worries that I would cheat were really projected on me. But we're about her. I don't understand him. I don't know what reality he lives in to where he can do anything he wants to do. Yet any semblance of that that Chelsea ends up doing on her side of the island, it, it's it's up in arms. It's oh she's cheating on me. Oh it's she's evil. She's betraying the trust. Uh, what about your actions are different? Granted, this week she kissed him, but you don't even know that. You're basing this off of stuff that she's already done, which has paled in comparison to what you have been doing. 
I hope I have this kind of delusion and confidence in my life because life would be so bliss. If I truly feel like I can do no wrong, you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. He's amazing. He's amazing. I, I'm honestly a fan at this point. I'm a fan at how he's able to convince himself that he is perfect. I want that in my life. I do. That has been it for this week's review, child. Like I told you, broken. Everybody broken. Besides maybe um, Kristen and, and thing, they, they gonna get back together. But everybody else is looking a little shaky, shaky, shaky. Um, we'll see what happens next week. It's looking like Aaron is seeing that Corey might be moving on. I don't know. Now that I'm wishing for Corey to move on, but I'd like Corey to get a little bit of you know, a little bit of action in the house. I would like that for him. So until next week, guys, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, hit the comments below. We be in these comments and I'll catch you next week for another review.